Hello, hello, family. Welcome back to Mom's Pearls. I'm Yolanda. I'm here with my sisters, Shayla and Brenda. And you know, we are here discussing life's questions with a biblical perspective. We are talking about taking care of our parents, taking care of the elderly in this topic. And here in America versus other cultures, we do it very differently here in America. Did you know that in Asian cultures, they do not have nursing facilities or home care facilities for their elderly to attend? They take care of that in home with the family. So here, but here in America, we have all these different options. We can send them to a nursing home. We can send them to a um, assisted living facility. There are even elderly communities where there are houses built just for the elderly, older, older people to live in. So we're gonna discuss what it's like living in those different places. Not, not so much living in those places, but what it is to take care of your parents, what it is to take care of your grandparents and how much it will take out of you as well. Not so much financially, but as a person with your emotions as well. So please, please, please stay tuned. And we are going to discuss more about this topic of taking care of our parents. Mom's Okay, so we're just going to jump right in. Is it wrong to put your parents in a nursing home? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, sis. You ready? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, I don't think it's wrong, but the way I was brought up, that that, that was a no-no. They're going to stay with me, period. You go do it, you go do it, you go do it. But you have to have a heart for it. But I don't think it's, I don't think it's, wrong to put them in one but i just know i would that's just you me. wouldn't would. no no ma'am no ma'am okay what do you think sister brenda is it wrong to put your parents in a nursing home i don't think it's wrong it depends on the situation everybody has a different situation i know um i had to put my father in a nursing home but it was going to be temporary we were making provisions for him to come home so that everybody would be there between me and my husband working, my kids, just at nighttime to be in the house. You can check on him, you know, go back to sleep, whatever. And then we was going to have home health care for him in the daytime. And they would do the medication and do everything because we could not do that. He couldn't walk anymore. You know, he needed medication, things we could not do. Unfortunately, it didn't pan out for us to bring him home mm -hmm. because he only lived another seven months after that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, it, it, some people don't have the means to even do something like that. Some people, they don't have any other siblings. They don't have anybody but themselves. I had, at least I had my husband and I had my, my sons and you know my mm -hmm. nephews just to be there at nighttime if we were working. But it, it depends on the situation. I don't think there's a right or wrong. I just think that you got to discuss it with God and the Lord guides you to what is the best way to handle the situation. That's good. Definitely discussing it with God. And that's going to lead us into, I'm just going to throw put this scripture out there and see what you all think about it. First Timothy 5 and 8. It says, anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and it's worse than an unbeliever. Ooh. So with that, I read an article about putting your, putting people in the nursing homes, your family or whoever it may be. And they say the huge thing that I've seen here in America is that when you put them in a nursing home, you leave them, you essentially leave them there to die. Yes. And that's in some cases, people don't have any other family to come. So to take care of them so they go into the nursing home and that's all that they have but if you have family what it was suggesting is that you don't stop caring for them if you have to put them in a nursing home continue to visit with them continue to include them in the um the birthdays the the holidays continue to help them one big thing was 
to help them decorate their room so it can feel like their own. So they're not just in a sterile environment and feel like they're left there and just go by there and continue to keep them as a part of the family. So they will continue to feel a part of the family because when you go away, you don't, you just feel like, oh, nobody loves me. They, I'm over mm. here because they don't want me, but it's hard. So let's talk about some other options as well with nursing homes. So nursing homes are not the only options for our elderly to get some care. No, there's the assisted living, the assisted living care. See, I worked in the nursing home. I've done in-home care, health care. So everything is different, but each person is different also. And there, there are people in the nursing home that don't have family. You have to go in there and keep them motivated, keep them encouraged because they feel like they are actually brought in here to just die. When you bring them there, that's, that's their mentality. When you put them in a nursing home, you bring them there to leave them and for them to die. And so if any and everybody yes. in the heart of God's people would know, just go in there and give them a hug and just keep them motivated. The home, the assistant living, same thing. The, the, we're going in to help them in their homes or in their, in their places to, to take care of them. We're going in there, but they're still by themselves. We still have to encourage them and keep them uplifted. But I mean, ain't nothing worse than being in the house that's yours, paid for, people coming in to help you, and there's still nobody here. There's still nobody to give them a hug, nobody to motivate them. And tell, Come on, let's go. Look, let's stand up and dance for a minute or something. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's go take, yeah. a walk. You take a walk to the end of the driveway and come back. But we have to let them know that God loves them. You're not even bringing here just to sit you down right here and die. Everybody take off and leave you. No, he's, he's got somebody here to just show you. I still love you. You know what I'm saying? I'm here to help you. God, God has God has their back. They just don't know it. And it's up to, it's up to us to press. But it's God has you. And so the workers, it affect the living as well. So you have to have a compassionate heart. It goes a long way when, especially with those who don't have any living family or relatives to come and visit and to be by their side when they have to, get some assisting living mm -hmm. help. Yeah, I, what, one thing I want people and all our viewers out there to know is that it is a very difficult decision to make. You know, it's heartbreaking sometimes to be like, what do I do? I love my parent, I wanna keep them home and I wanna take care of them. But sometimes it, it doesn't work out that way. But one thing to know, don't beat yourself up in guilt over it. Our viewers, family, don't don't do that. You know, God knows your heart. He understands the the situation, and He is still there with you, working it all out. And one thing He doesn't want you to do is beat yourself up in guilt over why did I'm I'm putting them there. What you do instead is you research all the different choices that you have, all the different places that you can put them in, and then. Go to him and ask him to guide you to where is the right location to place your loved one. And it, it will work all out. It will just give, give it to him and he will work it out for you. Absolutely. And that, the, your, your statement just leads us right into the next part of our discussion, discussing the pros and cons of a nursing home versus out taking them into our home to care for. Yes. And that, I'm all for if you can bring your loved ones home because even though they're elderly, they still have so much to give. Not only their love, the wisdom, the sense of humor, you know, all the elders in my family were just hilarious. <laughs> I mean, hilarious. The things they would say, I'd be like, what, Grady, what are you talking about? She said, I'm still breathing all the time. Okay. <laughs> I'm still a woman, right? Like, come on, girl. And I was like, oh, wow, just, you learned so much from them. And so that it would be our number one choice. But unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Now, I was reading an article about home, um, not home care, about nursing home versus assisting living, which is getting very popular. My husband had an aunt and uncle, married couple, who were in assisting living in New York they enjoyed it. They had their own like little 
little apartment. They really, really enjoyed it. They were, you know, they were there together. There was people there who had their cars because they're mobile. They can still get around, do things. Okay. They have a lot of um, activities to me, more so than in the nursing home. People in an assisted living can really get around. They do a oh, lot. Yeah, they, they, do, they do so much. They really get around. But they don't really need that much medical care. And that is the difference that I found with assistant living in the nursing home. A lot of times people have to go into the nursing home because they need more medical attention where they're not going to get that in assistant living. Oh. And what also was surprising to me is that assistant living is like two to three thousand dollars cheaper than a nursing home. I thought it would be vice versa. <laughs> but 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 with the assistant living. Uh, the, I mean, the nursing home is more on hands care. It's more on hands yes. care. Yes. Nurses, the CNAs or the meds, not med students, they have to, they need more care. In other words, the assisted living people, they have people, they have aids and stuff that come in to help them, but they're more mobile and they can move around yes. more. Whereas that's why it's $3. You said assisted living is $3,000 cheaper. Like two to three thousand dollars cheaper, yeah. Yeah, because they don't need all the all hands care in the nursing home. You really need everybody there. Is 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 like the body of God, like God's body. Every, every little piece needs to connect to make this here work for this mm. one person. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Every little joint connects the doctor, the nurses, the aides, the, you know, the therapists. Everybody comes together in that nursing home. Whereas over here at the assisted living. They, they can come in and they can get look uh, a aid and a nurse for their for their meds. They can go to the doctor's office. They they can move mm -hmm. around. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, oh, let me tell you. <laughs> so what about in our home? What about bringing them into our home? Oh yes, Most yeah, yeah. If you have that choice now, the the one thing that I see this happening a lot more now. Even you bring them home where usually they would get a 12 hour um, home attendant. They're cutting it down to four hours. Oh, yeah. So which 12 hours helps much better because if your family is, is working during the day, it's good. They have a 12 hour person there. So they go to work, you know, everything is good. But then they come home. They they're good. They're home with you. The only downfall sometimes with home attendance, depending from the agencies, from my past experiences, they cannot give medication some of them what if there is no home attendant what if it's just you taking care of your parent or the the elderly person so there is no home attendant coming what are some some good things that come from that well so I'm, i'll go it'll did, oh sorry some good things to come from taking them into your home is that they still remain in the house they still remain a fully connected member of the body whether their room is upstairs downstairs they're still in the midst of all the action going on in the home so there's they still have some if they only need assisted living even if they need nursing home care they're still going to be able to interject their opinion more so than if they're away where they may have their thoughts and then by the time you come around that thought has long gone or passed but a pro would be to that they are still a connected member like in the house See, at all times like my mom my mom i gave her her meds my sister gave her a meds. i had mm -hmm. an aunt that was a nurse i asked her to watch her so i could go to church one day to give her her meds and i just happened to call to say okay how she's doing you're not here. You got to come back and give her her meds because they, the doctor showed me how to give her her shots and everything. Plus, she had VNA, the Visiting Nurses Association, come out for the stuff that I couldn't do. They have people, mm -hmm. nurses coming out to do that. And they would come every day at a certain time to take care of certain things. Everything else I did or my sister did. But it, it's like you have to research. You have to research the therapists, the, the nurses, and everything so that you can have that help inside the home and she mm -hmm. loved my mom she loved being back being in her spot everything was hers we, we were in her world at that time you know what i'm saying right oh, right she, when, the, that, when they get to the, stay home they get to remain like they don't get removed from their their place of 
comfort from what they're used to. Yes. And I, so going into a facility, it's a it's a new place. It's not their bed. It's not their favorite chair. They can maybe bring blankets or a pillow, but it's still not, you know, how you get that groove in the mattress. They don't have that when you yep. go to a nursing facility or even an assisted facility. What were you going to say, Sister Brenda? Yeah, it, it, it's all of those things you're saying is so very, very true. And at the end of the day, you know, just be upfront with them as long as they can understand what's going on and, and include them in this decision. And, and explain to them why at this time they might not be able to be home in their own beds. Because at the end of the day, we have to honor them, us, our parents and our elderly. And Proverbs 23, 22 says, listen to your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother when she is old. We have to honor them every day because that's the commandment God gave us, honor thy parents. Yes. Amen. Amen. He did. Amen. And with that, we are going to go into our pearl of the week. Yay! Hi, ladies. Thank you for having me. Hello to all our beautiful viewers. So this pearl of the week is a spiritual pearl. I'll be talking about renewing our minds. So Jesus spoke of hell, Sheol, or the Greek word Hades, which is translated in hell. And there's like two known facts I have for you is that one, hell is real. And two, it is a very unpleasant place. And I'm saying this, guys, because the choices we make today, tomorrow, or the next day will determine where we spend eternity. And if I ask you guys, where do you want to spend eternity? Of course, we're going to choose heaven. No one wants to choose being in an unpleasant place. All right, so the choices, guys, it starts from somewhere. It starts with renewing our mind. Let's look at Romans 12, 2. It says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good pleasing and perfect will. So we have to renew our mind. And how do you do that? By knowing God's word. We have to know it, read it, study it, meditate on it. We have to stand on it. We have to apply God's word to our everyday lives. So what seed are you watering? Are you watering the worldly seed or are you watering your spiritual seed? That's the question. Also in 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So if we're not reading God's word, then how are we getting our training? How are we, you know, being trained in righteousness? So we, we just have to renew our minds, guys. There you have it, ladies. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you so much for that, Pearl. It was awesome. It was amazing. Yes. Thank you so much. All yes. right. So... I want to comment on that last part <laughs> that you spoke on, Sister Brenda, and it's hard to take sometimes to take in your uh, elderly person. If you're single, if you don't have the opportunity or the means to leave your job, to be able to stay home, to take care of your parent or whoever you're taking care of, it's it can be stressful on your time. Yes because you become the sole provider. You're, you don't have the nurses, you don't have the assistance and it takes a toll on your body as well. If you have to help them get up and move around because sometimes they can become dead weight and they can't move themselves. So it's, it's also worth it to, to weigh all the options for yeah. yourself and for the other person you're going to be providing care for. Because if you're not one to be able to put your heart into it or take care of them, it might be best to put them in a facility, but remain a part of their life. Don't just leave exactly. them there and make them somebody else's burden. Remain a part of them. Let them remain connected to the family because it does. it is worth mentioning that it will take a toll on your personal life to care for a family member. Amen. Okay, now yes. we're gonna go into talking about you know, how you you do it when you're moving into a, a facility. How are we going to, what are we going to talk about with that, Sister Shayla? Well, I want to tell y'all first. Now, this here, I'm, I'm going to start with this and I'm going to finish with something else. But see, All right. <laughs> I want y'all to realize one of the commandments that God gave us, Exodus 20 and 12, 
says, honor your father and mother, mother that your days may be long in the land of the Lord your God is giving you, okay? Now, when we're deciding or trying to figure out if we go put them in nursing homes or keep them at home, you know what I'm saying? It's best to realize that don't take this problem really, I mean, personal upon yourself because the, the illnesses that's going on is not your fault. I don't want anybody to think that if I put her in the nursing home, oh my God, I'm doing the wrong thing, wrong answer. That's wrong answer. That's not her fault. Is it, what we need to do is just pay for it. Know that we let, let them know that we love them, regardless of what's going on. We're going to do the best thing for them. And, and like Sister Brenda said at first, give them an opportunity to voice their opinion if they're able. But for, from a personal standpoint of view, I don't want anybody to feel pressure that I can't take care of them. What's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? I've seen right. people take care of their parents at home and blah, blah, blah. No, everybody's not the same. And see, God ain't gonna put more on you than you can bear. Just, I'm just putting the throwing that out there, okay? Right. So, with that being said, we need to, uh, uh, like she said, get out here and investigate. Is it pros and cons? Are we gonna... Uh, Will they be okay in this nursing home? No, because you know you want them at home with you. But will they be okay in this nursing home? Number two, yes, because it makes it easier on you and you still are able to be there with them, you know, coming and going. But that one thing, the first one, am I doing the right thing? That's the first, am I doing the right thing? That's the pressure that anyone that's looking at assisted living in nursing homes is faced with. Am I doing the right thing? Did I do right by her? Did I do right by him? Will they forgive me? Uh, yes. What, all right, can y'all can y'all voice your opinion on that? Because that's the way I feel. I, just, I, I I fully know what you're saying because I felt like that. I was I was so guilty. Like I have to do this. I at first I was no 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 no. I'm going to make this happen. But and, you know, the social worker sat me down and she she spoke logic to me. I had a demanding job. I get stuck at work. And I felt my kids were so young at that time. And my nephew, I, will, I can't put this responsibility on them. This is my fault. This is my parent. This is for me to figure out how am I going to do this? My husband and I spoke on it. You know, our jobs, mine was even more demanding than his. I get stuck, can't be there. You know, the, the cow give him medication and he couldn't walk. And I have to wash him and clean him. My whole thing is like, mm, can I bathe my father? And how would he feel exactly. with me doing all of this? And that's yes. why I made the decision that I made to put him there temporarily while we made the home livable for everybody involved and then bring him back and he would have his home health aid during the day and then we would be there at nighttime. And so you know what? You have to do what works what's for you. That that is one reason why we ended up getting a um, I keep forgetting the name of the home health assistant to come mm -hmm. in for my grandfather because he absolutely hated us to wash him. Yes. That was if there was <laughs> nothing else he hated, that was for us to wash him. I was in middle school, I think like seventh, eighth grade, when we started helping care for him. And that was the one he was a big guy. Oh. He mm. was that might be where my kids getting their height from because it's not for me. Side note, but um, <laughs> he he absolutely hated that that yeah. we, as his grandkids and his daughter, was seeing all his his yeah. his stuff, you know, and yeah. that was that just exactly. wasn't working for him. So that's where we got we went. Mommy got him some care, and that took some pressure off of us and off of him he fussed yeah. at us still and he still fussed at the care the aide who had to wash him up but it was still it was still less stress on us and him to have an outside party do that I don't know why but it was just it was just different and it was better for us to have someone else come in and provide that part of the care for him so family don't be afraid to get help if you take them into your home don't be afraid to reach out and get help and if Definitely. you can afford it, if you have to take them in to get some help, there's private um, home health care aides. If you don't want to go through an agency, there's so many different options out there 
to help you take care of your your loved ones and it's just it behooves us to work as a community and not yes. just leave it all for one person Amen. all right question of the week family this is where you come on you give us a question and we discuss it with biblical perspective okay. all right so here's our question it says how can i tell if i have really forgiven someone if i can still mm. if i still can't stand being around them after i confess that i've forgiven them oh you ain't forgiven you ain't forgiven. i'm sorry i know no no that still made me sick to see him and i next look to forgive me and i still ain't stand to see him I don't Jesus. I, I ain't forgiven him. I haven't. So no, uh, that's just my opinion. That's just my so opinion. So how do you know if you still can't stand to be around him? You you go through an emotion, you're like, okay, I forgive you. And then next time you see him, you mad. It's like, uh you you have you have not forgiven him. Yeah, so you how do you know you've forgiven him if you welcome them back into your home for, to have for, coffee and for, donuts? For me, for me. You don't have to welcome them back into the home, <laughs> but you don't know. I feel you don't have to do that. My opinion is, but you have given it to God. He has placed it in your heart that you have truly forgiven this person. You don't feel that rage and that anger and that animosity towards this person anymore. And now you can even see that person. And now I have that situation that I've dealt with. Um, and I haven't seen the person in years because I removed myself from them because I was just so upset with a last situation with them. But then I forgave them. I don't hold that animosity. I don't hold that hatred. I don't hold that, ooh, I didn't get lay hands on you. I don't feel any of that now. I'm past that. And I'm at the place now, if I was to be in their presence again, I can say hello and keep it moving depending on what the spirit is telling me to do at the time. How and did you get they, past it? And if, and if they still unruly and still want to be like, woo, woo, wah, rah, I'll be like, you have a good day, God bless. And I will just keep it moving. What did you do to get past it? It wasn't me. It was God. Okay. It was, it was, it was God. And it, and it took a while, but he put that in me that you have to forgive this person. Because, you know, in the beginning, you're like, oh, no, I still want to slap the spit out of you. <laughs> But I had be coming into my relationship with God. He put me in a place where I started having a relationship with him, him having a you know, closer relationship with me. And I, I started learning it and he put that in my spirit. And I could talk about that person and not get all upset. And I just like, I pray for them. I, I hope God blesses them and that he changes their heart someday. And I'm Can like, you do good to them still? If they needed it, I'm at this point. Well, now, yes, I can. I wasn't okay. there eight, six, even six years ago, eight years ago. But now, now I can because I know this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to love my enemies also as yes. I love myself. Amen. So I have gotten to that point with this person that I can now, if needed, I would, I, I would do it. All right. All right, Sister Shane. I'm going to piggyback on that because the Bible said, Jesus said, how many times are we supposed to forgive him? When I seen 70 times, <laughs> seven, I started adding up. I was like, oh, Lord, and see, I want to do right by God, you know? Yeah. So he said the prayer and knowing that he said we got to forgive him that many times. It's like, you might as well let that go. God, you take this. I'm going to give it to you. I love you. And I see you now. I can come and give you a hug because of Jesus in me says, look, he told me I have to forgive you 70 times seven. I just want to forgive you one time. Keep it. I don't want to go 70 times seven. So I'm just saying, he said 70 times seven. That's what we're going to do. For me, <laughs> I'm doing it. I just want All right. To all right. All right, family. Thank you all so very much for joining us for this episode about taking care of your yes. parents taking care of the elderly if you have done that or if you're in the process of considering it put it in the chat and we can continue this discussion we yes. at some point this discussion is going to come up if you have family if you are a parent yourself 
this discussion is going to come up at some point. Who's going to take care of you? How are you going to take yes. care of your parents? And it's best to have it as early as possible to have these options. So it'll give you time to research it and know what's available to you, your family, in your state and what the laws say. So let's be educated, educate ourselves and reading up on the options, the suggestions and what the rules are concerning your insurance, your work life, your family life, because it all matters. There, every aspect of that matters because the person you'll care for matters as well because they're part of your family. We don't want to leave them out. We want to do what's best for them in the sight of God. And I'm yes. just going to tell you this scripture, Matthew 5, 33, no, Matthew 5, 38 through 40 through 39. Go ahead and read that. Let us know what you think about it. We thank you so much. This has been Mom's Pearls, where we have been discussing life's questions with a biblical perspective, and we will see you all next week. Bye. Mom's Pearls.